All right, and we are live with the 25th episode of the Game Session Podcast. I'm your host, Jose, slash the Seth Rukage. Uh, today, I'm joined by usual co-hosts, Sarah and Mesa. Yay. Near, 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 near. Far. Near, near, near. Far. Uh, today, we're joined by special guest and uh, good buddy, Kyle. So, wait, fuck, my brain's not working. Kyle, <laughs> how are you doing today? Thank you for coming on the show. I'm doing great. I am very excited to be here. I'm excited to uh, give very informed and very correct opinions on everything and shame you for disagreeing with me if you do. L- <laughs> litmus tests for these supposed good opinions. What do you think about Danganronpa? Never played it, but not opposed to playing them. You are a semi-decent human being then. <laughs> That's the nicest <laughs> thing ever said to me. That's exactly how I feel too, but I still have the strongest urge to dunk on it every single chance I get, even though I've never played it, never done anything with it. We'll happily play them. We'll happily play them. I feel like that's Weebology 101. (laughs) I can look at someone calling them a stupid weeb. Meanwhile, you're the biggest one. (laughs) Uh, I mean, I kind of, I kind of did that at, at my job the other day. There, there, uh, the theater that my job is attached to is one of the only theaters in SF showing the Demon Slayer film, and my job was just filled with weebs yesterday. <laughs> I just filled with them, and I'm like, oh no, the weebs! <laughs> I'm like, they're here. Well, we had, I, I went and saw that movie. Was it Thursday night? And one of the, there was like a group that walked into the theater before it started. And one of the guys like stops when he walks in. He's, he's got a shirt on like super hyped, really excited. And he looks and he goes, man, look at all these fucking weebs. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm just like, I'm just like my man. <laughs> Hell yeah. I know what's going on. <laughs> um, before we go to go start the show, just want to go and remind everyone to like, comment, subscribe on all the socials. Everyone's socials are on screen. You can find the link tree for my stuff down below. Um, game session podcast is filmed live here on Sundays at 6 30 p.m. PST. You can find it later on podcast services as well as on as well as on YouTube as full episodes and individually cut up segments. Um, there's a Patreon, so big shout out to uh, my patrons, Robin Nomad and Sly. And I also stream games here once in a while, and I'm procrastinating the hell out of a lot of video essay ideas that the scripts are done. I just don't feel like editing them whatsoever. <laughs> but um, Let's go ahead and jump back over to you, Kyle. Go ahead and uh, introduce yourself. Like, who are you? What do you do? Um, maybe what's your playing, favorite game, or just maybe even something that you're just strongly passionate about. Ooh, okay. Oh, that's Social well, security strong. card, first dog, <laughs> street you live on. So I'm, sh- I- I'm very passionate about, obviously, the, the, um, the excellent condiment that is mayonnaise. Oh, as thank we, you. As we've discussed many times and, and, and argued with many people about. However, I'm also passionate about Lunchables, so that's a different. Oh, no. Yeah. I, picked the wrong, yeah. I picked the wrong Hell person. Hell yeah. Excuse you. Lunchables are tasty. I feel like they get better as you as you get older. It's Heathens. You're like, ah, yes, a charcuterie they, board. They, they are great. So so I'm, I am a, I'm a musician. I, for a couple years, I had done some stuff in gaming. I had I'd written um, for a while and did some some occasional podcast things actually fun story that I've never really shared a ton about publicly but I once got to teach Tony Hawk how to play Battlefield. Oh wow. Um, oh, that's ooh. a dream. Which which was really cool. Uh it was just out of the blue. This was 2016. Um and I got a call or an email from from a a site that I won't name but they were they were doing advertisements for battlefield they were partnering with with ea and and dice to do advertisements for it and they were like hey you know could you fly out to la this week and i'm like this is a complete scam no i cannot do that (laughs) like this is like what do you no i i've i've barely done anything in this this is um but apparently there was a mutual friend who had put them in touch and they're like yeah i know he plays battlefield so go ahead and so they were like, no, we'll we'll buy the ticket. Like this is, you know, you'll come out and you'll work with a couple different, you know, people that we'll have on here to do these. So there were a couple people that I get to work with, but Tony Hawk was the one that was coolest for me because I grew up playing those games and still play those games. And I was like, this is like, sitting there in the moment. I was like, oh, cool. I'm 
playing Battlefield with Tony Hawk and showing him how to play. And then at the end of it, it was really me hiding behind the couch playing <laughs> while teaching them how to fake it mm-hmm. on a controller. Just, you know, because anytime you see something where people are fake playing games and like an advertisement or anything, you can clearly tell that they've never mm-hmm. played a video game before. So it's just like, hey, so just, just put your hands like this. and You know, maybe don't keep pushing, you know, start because <laughs> it's going to look weird. Just, just do this and you'll be fine. Did it uh, look so anything it's... like? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Holding it upside down, you know. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so but then a couple years ago, I, I decided I've always been a musician. I started playing when I was six years old, started playing drums. So I got back into music. I've been doing that full time. It's been my big thing. But over the last, you know, year or so, I've just been kind of like, hey, I'd like to get back into doing a little bit more with gaming stuff. So I've been talking about it more and I haven't started writing about it again. It's something I'm probably going to start doing maybe over the summer when I have more free time. But so excited to, to come talk about it with people and get into more. I actually play more video games now. I used to not really play as much because I would just tell myself I didn't have time. And now I'm like, no, I do have time because video games are great. Uh, Sp- even though I play like the same three games all the time. Spoiler warning, if you make a hobby out of making content about video games, you'll be surprised by the lack of video games you actually play. <laughs> <laughs> I've been true. like in the same freaking zone in Yakuza for like two weeks. No problems. <laughs> It's bad. Uh, quick, qu- back to back to the Tony Hawk thing. Do you put that on your resume by any chance? I do not. Oh. Did he introduce himself as "Hi, I'm Tony Hawk, the guy from Tony Hawk"? <laughs> no, no. It was, it was. So, like, some of the other people that were there that were part of it were a little more. Well, I guess uh, some of them were pretty normal. So, like, uh, Rob Riggle was one of them, who was pretty down to earth and pretty normal. Jeff Ross was one of them um riff raff was the other one who was that was a very interesting experience and then amber rose which was the only one that was a little like there was really no communication there was kind of like an entourage that came in and was like here's how we're doing things um but tony hawks like that one more than anyone else just felt like hey here's some dude in his 40s just coming in and hanging out yeah at even though I'm sitting here going like, this is the greatest thing that's ever happened to me. <laughs> this is like, I can die happy now. This is so cool. And he's just like, tell me about, how, you know, his kids play these games. He's like, yeah, I'm not very good at it. And I'm just sitting here like, dude, don't ask him anything about the Tony Hawk games. Don't like, don't, don't be that guy. Don't <laughs> do that. And it was, it was so hard because I wanted, like, I, I had so many questions that I wanted to ask and I had like, and I didn't, and I probably could have, and I probably should have, but I was like, don't, I don't want to be because it was like I, I was there for two days and they had people in for like three hour blocks. So it was one of those like, All right, I don't want to use it. Like, I don't want to be unprofessional. I don't want to like I want to do something like this again. This That would be cool. And I've never mm-hmm. gotten to do anything like that again. Whatever. But I was like, it's like, gosh, this is, it's really cool. So I do. I do regret not being able to 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 ask those. But it was cool seeing when like I saw I think the advertisements were on like Facebook and YouTube and stuff. And I saw them. I was like, hey, I, I know that. But, and I actually had a friend who helped me record some of the footage too, because I had been traveling during part of it. So he was recording some footage that got put into it as well. And so it was like his uh, gamer tag that was on there. And nice. we just kind of like, we're just kind of like, this is like, <laughs> this is such a small, like, n- to most people, it's just a pretty much, like, I was trying to explain it to my parents, and they were just like, you did what? I was like, all right, <laughs> never mind. I was like, like whatever but uh but for us it's like oh my god this is the coolest thing ever nice uh, on a slightly related tangent I, I won't go too much into uh one of my co well two of my co-workers are in a they're, they're in a pretty pretty decently sized band like they this this is just kind of like their day job when they're not touring or whatever but one of them their their father is the singer of one of my favorite bands of all time um just generally in the Bay Area. There, there's a lot of like old thrash metal Bay Area bands, so I, I won't say specifically. But like when I first um, when I first met him, I was just like, "Oh God, please don't talk to him about how cool I think his dad is. Don't fucking mention it. Don't fucking mention." It. And so, I, like at first, it just came off as like awkward. Like I'm just going to ignore you because I don't want to make it weird. <laughs> but I, I'm very bad at navigating those situations. It's always awkward because you don't want to like 
especially when you're really big fans of they of like people or, or the things that they do, you're always like, I just want to tell you that I love you and everything you do. But if I do that, <laughs> then you're gonna think I'm weird, and then this whole interaction will be pointless. So I'm just gonna have to play it cool, even though I don't want to play it cool because internally I'm freaking out. <laughs> I mean, I kind of on a related tangent. This this like isn't really hidden because it's in an IGN video somewhere that's like hidden in the internet. But I am on video telling the producer of Devil May Cry 5 that I have seen a naked picture of Dante that's canon floating around the internet. Oh, no. <laughs> Literally on video. <laughs> and I approached him afterwards. And I was like, I hope I didn't freak you out. And he started like cackling. And he was like, oh my god, no, that picture we like actually had to do for like character modeling purposes. He's like, trust me, you're fine. Did and he have then, fully modeled PP, or was it like yes, bald area? Yes, this is an actual canon like like concept art that they okay. had to, do to get Question. Like, body done. Rower or shower? Shower. Damn. <laughs> Josh is ripped, dude. <laughs> and I and I and now he's mutuals with me on Twitter, and he like shares my articles that I that I've been doing, and I'm like, I hope you know that we know each other because I literally t- told you in front of everybody that I've seen a naked picture of the character that you're not my Twitter. <laughs> so so yeah, I mean, we all we all we all have those stories. <laughs> but um, Kyle, I guess like yeah, Godin. Um, what what's what have you been playing? What's maybe your favorite game? So I, I play a ton of Destiny. Um, which oh yeah, oh yeah. Played a little bit less over the last couple of months just to try to avoid some burnout, but my version of a lot less is still like 20, 30 hours a week sometimes. Kyle's um, been helping me understand the canon I've been missing. <laughs> yeah, so that's that's kind of like my big... Um, currently, my, my hunter looks like Ronald McDonald. Because I was, I got a new, sh- I got a new shader, and I was like, "Oh, let me just see what this looks like." And I originally, like at the time, my character was all orange and blue, and my name was "It's Nerf or Nothing" the trademark symbol, which a friend of mine had inspired. And then I was like, I, I checked out the new shader for the, the Guardian games, and I was like, "Oh my god, that face looks like Ronald McDonald." <laughs> this is, and every time I look at it, I just look at it and I go, "Oh my god." This is like I don't know how because I, I I come up with uh, pun names based off of my my normal username just with my de- within my Destiny clan. So I was like, how am I ever gonna? I don't know how I top this. Like, I don't know because this is just perfect. So that's just kind of been my big. And then I play I play Football Manager, which is just because I'm a I'm a numbers nerd and I keep telling myself like, oh, I'm gonna start near because I really loved you know, uh, Automata, and I really want to play this. And I'm like, yeah, it's cool, but I got it on PC, so I'm going to wait until things are patched up a bit. Yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll get into that a bit, but isn't, like, the PC version, like, specifically fucked up because uh, the game breaks a bit if it hit, goes over 60 and there's no native mm-hmm. V-Sync or yeah, limiter? Yeah, Automata, Automata had the same problem to the point where Square never got, or uh, Platinum never got around to fixing it, so fans made, of like, a fan-made patch that fix like everything within like a month no within like two weeks a fan of like a fan made patch came out that fixed everything platinum never did anything and that's why it's I'm... happening with this one too <laughs> squares just like <laughs> that's why i'm kind of weary about even getting um resident evil 7 day one i'm not resident evil 7, Re- resident evil village uh day one on pc just because um <laughs> j- j- just just like contrast like <laughs> japanese developers typically have crappier pc ports well capcom is the uh the exception yeah, yeah. really because like yeah seven two three devil may cry five like all of those have been perfect from day one so mm-hmm. i mean like, I, they're I, probably I'm, the best pc ports i've ever played i'm paranoid and i love resident evil so much and i'll probably just preload it on both or actually no i, I forgot i was supposed to do a very specific shout out at the top of the show um Cancy on um on Twitter uh, was very generous and gifted me a copy of the, I guess the deluxe version of uh, Resident Evil Village on Steam, which also included the DLC for seven. So uh, incredible. Thank you to Cansey. Thank you for that. 